God don't cause. It's not part of his life. If God is causing and Satan is causing, God does not have the moral justification to condemn Satan. Don't tell me that somebody because he doesn't pay tight, his business collapse. No, it's not biblical. He may lack some understanding of that business. I agree. But his business doesn't collapse because God caused him. It is not in the nature of God to cause any man. It's not in his nature. When the pastor come on, Pupi and come on the social media, and he said a federal pastor will die of stroke. You can know. So if you are in that church, which church are you attending? You are under a native doctor. Because if he can cause his fellow pastor, one day he will cause you. He's just, he's just warming up. Because one day you will offend him. Will, the same language he use, he's ready to use against you. Many pastors are angry when people leave their church. When they leave their auditorium, they say he's worshipping somewhere else. They say, after what I've done for you, I remember when you were nobody. I was this for you. I was that for you. Eh. You too, have you paid the blood of Jesus that you said on me? Some people say, because my heart does not release you in ministry. And my heart has not released you. You will not make it. Eh? Anybody that's doing that was so in facets of the scripture, please. So you can know that it's an error. That's why when I see some people reacting to teachings online, some of them are re reacting with emotion. Instead of giving Bible facts. Now I'm teaching you that God don't cause and I gave you Bible verses. I'm not preaching stories. I'm not telling you my story. I'm not telling you my experience. I'm telling you Bible verses to convince you that God don't cause and no man can cause. I saw a young man lying down on the sick bed one day and I said to him, I hope you are not afraid. He said, sir, I must tell you the truth. I'm afraid. A few days after, he died. The mind. Until your mind gives in, your breath does not go out. Be strengthened with might in your inner man. Strong-minded people are the ones who will survive all the challenges of life. God answers our thoughts as he answers our voice. So you have the voice of the mind, then you have the voice of the mouth. Therefore, watch your thoughts. Control your mind. Build up your thoughts to the point that you carry the mentality, I cannot be sick. Imagine that you are living long. I sit down several times. I see me at 80, 90, still working, still moving, blessing my great grandchildren. Think that you are writing check of 10 million for missionaries to bless the poor, to build houses for people. I know you don't have a house now, but imagine that time. Imagine that I was like that before, squatting, but I build houses for people today. Imagine it when thoughts fill up your mind, words will flow out of your mouth, and behavior will become natural. Hello, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to the show. I hope everyone is doing just fine. And then let me start by asking you for this small request. Please, um, if you are a regular viewer of this channel and uh, you haven't subscribed, please kindly do that because it helps us a lot and we shall forever be grateful to you. So, let's get on with our conversation for today. Okay. Um, I understand that um, having a dream is important. Having something like a plan is very, very important. And also holding strong to the things you want to achieve in life is important. But just having a strong conviction about things would not necessarily get them done. For example, if you want a house, but you are not working towards achieving that dream of having that house, you will never ever get there. Having a plan is important, but not as important as actually working towards achieving that plan. Same thing like having a strong conviction, really believing in something. Believing it in it is just one part of it, but actually working along day in, day out to achieve that thing is another part of it. And like the man of God mentioned, and let me just say this before I continue. This is someone I respected. I saw a video of him when he said that people should stop competing, men of God should stop going after each other, and that men of God should understand that the purpose of them being out there is not to compete 
with one another. That was an excellent message and I personally love it because I think that competition is something that destroys society the most. But that aside, this man of God is saying here that he met someone on a sickbed and asked the person, are you afraid? Are you scared? And the person said, yes, he was. And within a couple of days, the person died. So my question to the daddy, Bishop David, when you met someone who was scared, what did you do? Did you pray for them? Did you try to encourage them? Did you try to strengthen their faith in God and to remove the spirit of fear in them? Did you do all that? And those of you guys saying that miracles are, are real, why didn't you heal that person? Why didn't you? You know, this is the thing I find so hypocritical with some men of God. Whatever story they are trying to tell is always to support a certain narrative they are trying to prove. If they are having this narrative that they want to push on us, they will always bring forth a story that supports that narrative. They are always very good storytellers. They tell us all kinds of stories. If they want to preach tithe and offerings, if they want to push the whole narrative of tithe and offerings upon us, they will bring a story that will support tithe and offerings. They will tell us that there was somebody who did not tithe and wasn't succeeding until that person started tithing. And then everything turned around. He went from zero to hero. If they want to push a narrative of signs and wonders, they will tell us there was once a person living in a village. That village nobody knows. The person's name no one knows. But there was a person living in a village who was suffering from one affliction or the other. And when that person met them, they lay hands on that person and that person got healed instantly. This story will be when they are trying to push the whole narrative of signs and wonders upon us. If they are trying to push a narrative of them being all powerful and God looking after them and doing what they asked God to do or what God thought he needed to do on their behalf, they will bring up a story about something that was impossible and they themselves, they themselves thought it was impossible. But God came through. God helped them out. And everything went on smoothly. This is when they are trying to let you know that they are a favorite person of God and God will always come through when they need something. And now, when the man of God is trying to push a narrative of having dreams and aspirations and really holding firmly to your dreams and be courageous and be steadfast and understand that just dreaming and really, really putting your feet to the ground and holding strong on what you believe in can actually make you succeed. He brought forth this story of this guy in a hospital bed who was scared and so he dies. <laughs> these people, these people. And this is just to let you know that whenever you are afraid, bad things would happen to you. That a shaky mind can never get anywhere. What you need is steadfastness. 
what is you need is a strong conviction in the Lord. That is what they are trying to push. Which I am not saying is not a good thing. You know, having, like I said before, having a dream is good. Having a belief in something is good. And really, really believing in those things is good. But remember, just believing in something won't get it done. The fact that you just believe or have a dream of having a house in the future doesn't necessarily mean that you will have that house except you start walking towards having that house. Like the man of God, Bishop David, who said that he didn't have a house, but now he has a lot. And the reason he has achieved all this wasn't because he just had a dream and kept on dreaming. No, that wasn't it. It was because even though he had those dreams, he worked towards achieving those dreams. Okay, He was able to convince a lot of people into buying in whatever he was selling. And those people gave him a lot of money, which he then invested and started building world for himself. It wasn't just believing that gave him enough, uh, enough money. It was him being able to convince other people into buying the product he was selling. So listen, my brothers and sisters, what I'm trying to say is dreams alone doesn't make a man. Just dreaming won't get you anywhere. You need to start working hard. You need to figure out what you are good at and start doing it. Day in, day out. Slowly but surely, success will come your way.